I'm about to show you the greatest checkmate you have ever seen. In fact, I am so sure about that, that if this checkmate does not amaze you, feel free to dislike the video and leave a hate comment. But I know you will love this. But who is playing anyways? Edward Lasker played against Sir George Allen Thomas. Now, Edward Lasker is not to be confused with Emmanuel Lasker. Emmanuel Lasker was the second world champion. And if you're wondering, yes, they are related. They are third cousins twice removed. Now, while Edward Lasker is not as good at chess as Emmanuel Lasker, he's still a very good chess player. In fact, he won the US Open five times. Besides that, he also got an engineering degree and you might know one of his inventions. He actually invented the mechanical breast pump. So this guy was amazing at chess and invented the mechanical breast pump. They also called him the chess player. <laughs> if you don't feel inadequate yet, just wait for his opponent, Sir George Allen Thomas. Thomas was a great chess player. He defeated Max Oewe, Mikhail Botvinnik and even Jose Raul Capablanca. At the time when Thomas defeated Capablanca, Capablanca hadn't lost a game for four years. Besides that, he also was a world-class badminton player. Wait, badminton, really? Yes, you heard right. Thomas won a total of 21 All England's Badminton Championship titles. Besides that, he also got to the quarterfinals of the Wimbledon Tennis Tournament. Imagine being the sibling of that guy. His mom is just like, this is Thomas, he's a world-class chess player, 21 times badminton champion, amazing tennis player, and that's his brother, Dylan. F***ing Dylan. As if that's not enough, Thomas had the idea of a team world championship in badminton. He also fulfilled this idea organized the tournament and to this day the world team championship in badminton is called the Thomas Cup. So if you're ever proud of your achievements in life, just think about those two guys. <laughs> Edward Lasker gets the white pieces and he starts with d4. We have e6, the Horvitz defense. You probably haven't seen that a lot because it does not get played that much. The reason is it's just not that good? I mean, it's not terrible, there are just way better ways to fight with black against d4. Um, after the knight develops, we get f5. So this is almost like a Dutch opening now, they, the two transpose sometimes into one another, and uh, usually get pretty chaotic games out of this. Uh, the reason why it's probably not played that much is, white can just play very normal developing moves here and be better. Like, we develop the knight with white, knight gets developed by a black, this bishop gets developed, uh, pinning here, now the bishop stops the pin, we get this trade, and e4. That's the reason why the trade happened, huh? N right now you can't play e4, because this is too much protected, but after the trade you can play e4. Uh, of course, f5 got played to prevent e4, so he took it. We have knight takes, and after something like b6, you can already see what I'm talking about. Like, white just played pretty normal moves and is in fact already up plus one. So the computer already says white is better here. Um, b6, uh, preparing this bishop development, and white already starts attacking with knight to e5. Now, as a chess teacher, it is my duty to tell you to not do that. First, develop your pieces and castle, and only then attack. And in fact, the computer agrees here completely with me. You should develop the bishop, castle, and then you may attack. Uh, this is not terrible, it just loses a bit of the advantage that white had. Uh, we have castles, now the bishop gets developed, this bishop gets developed, and Lasker thought, alright, let's go queen to h5. So, if you just look at this visually, it does not look that good. Like, you have all of these attackers ready to go, queen directly in front of the king, and you might see why this gets not played a lot, because black did not make mistakes. Black just played normally, and is already under a lot of fire. Black plays the innocent looking queen to e7, and here, we already arrived at the highlight of the day, white to move, and checkmate in seven. 
Now I don't think you want to pause the video here because checkmate in seven is kind of a lot, it's kind of uh, difficult to see, but maybe you can spot the first two moves. Because the first move, you probably know it. If I hype it up like that, it has to be a queen sack. Like I wouldn't say greatest checkmate of all time without a queen sack. So white sacks the queen, black has to take it. There are no other moves you take and white plays double discovered check. Oh, and by the way, if you watched until here, please like the video and leave a comment. If you don't like the video, I will find you break into your house and sprinkle everything with sugar water. So everything will be a little bit sticky. Anyways, you have two ways to get out of the check here. Black can go back, but here you can pause the video actually and see if you find the mate in one. I think it's pretty doable. You play knight to g6, checkmate, this knight here controls everything. Quite a beautiful checkmate if you ask me. Uh, black of course saw this and move the king forward. White plays check. There's only one legal move for black. You have to go here or all the other squares are protected. H4 check, the king has to run. G3 check, king has to run further. Bishop to E2, check again. And no, you can't go up. All the squares are protected and the knights protect each other. The king has to go to G2, rook H2 check, the king goes to G1. This is the square where the white king would normally be if you castle short. And here, you can decide between two different checkmates. Lasker decided to go king d2, checkmate with the rook. But I think way more beautiful would be long castles checkmate. You can tell me what you want. That's an amazing checkmate. 